uh, red shirts and is it third teamers or, yeah, or, or, any, or anyone's reserves? On, anyone that's on the scout team uh, can uh, can play. It was a, a, a domination by the offensive unit. Oh, so uh, you know they had some fun for sure. It's a, we probably worked the defensive scouts a little harder in the tempo stuff, and they looked a, a little more gas. But it was it was fun to see everybody get to play around for sure. Are, are there specific guys, or is it just a film deal where you can kind of concentrate? Like this is if this is your week to really look at red shirts or kind of do those kind of situations. Yeah. Do you look at specific guys? This no, week? not so much. We we really did that more for uh, the enjoyment of competing. Okay. Um, you know, we've uh, both days this week we've been able to go a lot of endo and that's you 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 get everybody in that and uh, in one-on-ones yesterday to see I thought Jalen Julia stood out you know in one-on-ones at corner uh, you know I think he's going to be a really good player and um, and you know today in that deal there were several uh, you know Lodge and Van Jefferson we, we know that they're talented Jason Pellerin and, and DK Buford really look good as did Alex Givens and I thought Austrian played hard on the defensive side, and Sean Curtis kind of flashed a few times. But uh, that that wasn't so much to look at specific people as much as it was to just to let them compete. Alex Gibbons is an interesting guy. Obviously, you can address the office of line and recruiting, but he's one of those you have already. Well, how's he kind of come along? Oh, we're really excited about him. Great kid, going to play hard. He's got a nasty streak in him. His body's changing. Another year with Coach Jackson and. Uh, you know, I think he'll he'll fit in nicely with the with the guys that we have coming back, and you know it's a big year in recruiting for offensive line. We need to sign five to six guys, uh, particularly now with Christian moving to a medical. You know, we're we're, we're aiming for six if we can uh, find the six that we, we we feel good about. This senior class, I mean, and you can even throw maybe a Laquan in there too, Rob. You know, because they're mm-hmm. junior guys. I mean, what what is this senior group? You know, um, you know, very much indebted to them. You know, for uh, they went through the lean times uh, here and didn't have much to uh, to smile about some days. And um, they their their buy-in to to us asking them to do certain things and to buy into certain core values. Without that, you don't get the uh, you don't get the results that we've gotten in, in a short amount of time compared to a lot of programs that are trying to rebuild. So um, just uh, you know, very indebted to those guys for for joining us here and helping us, uh, you know, make competing and, and winning some games uh, a new normal around here. When you have talented third-year players like Laquan or Robert, even a Tony or Evan, what do you tell them in terms of looking at the NFL draft? Do you say? Yeah. Well, nothing yet. Um, well, I mean, we've had conversations before the season and then, you know, throughout the year when I have my individual meetings with them, we'll, we'll talk a little bit. But uh, my encouragement to everyone is – you know, be sure we gather the facts, and I am for you, whatever's best for you, and, and I've proven that. You know, with like Dante and you know, and the, and the kids we've had is, you know, I want them to to do what is best for them and and make wise choices. And so, you know, we'll help them gather exactly what the facts are when the time comes. Some are no-brainers that uh, you you know when you recruited them, you told them this would be the case. Others, you, you need to take the process slow and make sure you make a wise decision for yourself. And as much as they will uh, allow us to be, we would we would love to walk with them through it. You've talked about how Tony, you could see him very well coming back next year. With Is it hard, too, with him knowing he's going to have to have that surgery and knowing how to bleed into the process if he even wanted to make that decision? Yeah, I don't think that's uh, even a consideration mm-hmm. in Tony's mind right now. I think that's maybe the media talks about it, but Tony and I have talked, and I don't even – I don't think uh, that he's even thinking in those mm-hmm. terms. He's thinking, let me get myself well and, and come have a great uh, senior year. And I think Evan's kind of thinking the same thing too. But um, but again, I'm not. I don't. Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll gather all the facts. But you know, for Tony, I think he's he's thinking the wisest thing. He told me that. So I, I, unless something changes, which it could, but believe that uh, that he's thinking. You know, right right now about making the best decision would be to come back and get himself well. Have you approached this bye week differently than maybe some of the past, <laughs> just having played ten straight games? Uh, yeah, typically in bye weeks, I've probably have gone Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Mm-hmm. Uh, we just are going Tuesday, Wednesday, and then tomorrow's a lift day and uh, and a little run. 
and then but we are practicing on Sunday instead of just having a so they basically have two practices and then some time off and then we'll bring them back Sunday and have a practice get a, get an extra probably an extra Tuesday type practice in for LSU How's Eric Swinney been handling rehab? Good. Yeah, yeah, Paul's real happy. We we went up. We go over him once a week, and you know he's he, he's coming along nicely. You were really excited about him. I mean, in terms of yeah. him fully healthy, what kind of game did he have? Well, I mean, I 